I'm going to hotwire this dead Teleria battery in hopes that I can get it to charge again. Hey, what's going on? I have broken the cardinal rule of electric bike ownership and I let a battery sit for too long where it's no longer recognizable by its charger and I can't charge it. Now there is a way to jumpstart these batteries, but it does void the warranty and it's not the safest thing. So this is for educational purposes. Don't try this at home. So as you can see, I go to check the charge and nothing lights up and that's what tells me it's dead. Plus I throw it on the charger and it just does not take. So let's talk about what you'll need to accomplish this. I have a razor blade to cut off any heat shrink, some wire strippers, a nice wire cutter, a T10 Torx bit, some wire to make our jumper cable out of, some butt connectors, and some solder sticks, and we'll see if I need more heat shrink when I'm done. All right, so let's just start by removing the cover here. We've reached the point of no return. That label says warranty void if removed. All right, so let's take a closer look in here. There is a gasket that we just wanna kind of get out of the way for now. We definitely don't wanna lose that. So what we're going to be doing is taking this negative wire here and bypassing the BMS. So let's remove this heat shrink right here. I just want to take a minute to acknowledge my shaky hands in this video. You're going to see them shaking throughout. It's not because I'm nervous. It's because I was born with a condition called essential tremors. And when I'm trying to use my fine motor skills, my hands tend to shake even more. Hopefully it's not too distracting. Thanks for bearing with me and enjoy the rest of the video. So under this heat shrink is this connector that we'll want to disconnect so that we don't have a current going from the charger to the battery. So before I go snipping anything in the battery, let's go ahead and build our jumper wire here. Let's see if we can't get that working. So we need one of these butt connectors. So that will allow us to connect to the negative side of the battery with the screws that are already in there. And then we'll just use a butt connector like this so that we can easily connect it to the negative wire coming from the charge port. So here's my jump wire, not the prettiest job. I actually ended up soldering this on just because I didn't have a good set of crimpers, but I soldered it on. You can see that beautiful job there. And then these butt connectors. This end is going to connect to the battery's wire. So got to get that done now. Okay, so we've reached the point where we're actually going to snip the wire inside of the Teleria battery and it's going to be this black negative wire here. I'm just going to go right in the middle there. That way we have plenty of room to work with the extra wire. Now we're going to work with this end and strip this wire so that we can add the butt connector to it. 16 gauge. Now let's get a little bit more. This wire is really kind of rubbery. Feels more rubbery than plastic. There we go. And we'll add this connector to it. So now what we want to do is disconnect one of these wires from the negative side and negative is going to be black, positive is going to be red. So we'll just go with this first one here. Then we'll stick our jumper wire in there and we can make a connection. Okay, our jumper is connected. Now we just wanna plug in these two butts here. So 
So we have our wires reconnected. Here's the jumper right here. And then we will just plug in the charger port. Now if this goes as planned, I should be able to connect my charger here and it should start charging. So let's plug in the charger side. Kinda wanna keep that open so everything's fine. Let's plug in the charger and hope for the best. Now keep in mind, what I just did is not a permanent fix. We're just trying to get enough juice into the battery so that it'll recognize the charger and I can charge it from here on out. So here goes nothing. All right, let's see what happens. flashing green and red right now. Doesn't seem to be doing anything. Let me unplug it real quick. Nothing happened. I don't know. I thought I did it right. Let's, let's try it again one more time. So the charger's flashing green and red right now. When I was trying to charge it last night, it would just turn on, then turn off, try to charge, and then just go to green. I also have the Shy battery charger. We can try that one and see if that makes a difference. All right, let's try the Shy battery. This is the variable charger. Let's just see if we can't get this thing to boot up. Right now I have it pushing out two amps. Okay. It's doing more than it was doing last night. So the shy battery seems to be working. It's detecting, oh, it's really low. So 15 volts, 1.4 amps. That's what it's pushing out. We'll just keep an eye on this. Make sure that it doesn't get hot or anything. And we'll see if we can't get it to recognize a charge. Oh, it's kind of showing some lights there. It's doing something. So we don't want to go very long like this. We definitely don't want to try to charge this thing full with this little jump start. We just need to get it enough juice so that it will begin to recognize the charger under a normal configuration. So I'm just gonna let this go for a little bit longer and then reconnect it as if it was stock. Uh, that's where these little solder sticks come in. And hopefully I will have a revived battery. Now, the downside is, is because I let this battery discharge so low, it won't be able to charge back up to full capacity but it's better than nothing. I just wanna reiterate that this is for educational purposes only. This can be dangerous. You are dealing with lithium ion batteries that when damaged, they could ignite. Also, you could be dealing with a large amount of voltage as well. So again, do not try this at home. I also wanna mention that this is the battery for the Telaria MX3, so the original Telaria. So if you're looking at the MX4 or above, it could look different inside. But the moral of this story is, don't let your battery get to this point. The reason why I allowed this to happen by mistake is because I have the Shy Battery Systems Titan battery for the Telaria, and so this one just went neglected. So essentially what we've done is we've bypassed the BMS so that we can get a current into the battery because what the BMS does is it protects the battery and it protects you. So if there's ever overcharging or anything like that, the BMS will shut down your charger and keep you and the battery safe. So if I were to let this keep going, my suspicion is, as is, is that this would just overcharge and it could be very disastrous. That's why you don't wanna charge at full capacity with the BMS bypass like this. So here in a minute, I'm gonna disconnect everything, put it back together as if it were stock and then charge it as I would normally because then the BMS will regulate how the charging takes place. Now that the Shy battery is working, let's go ahead and disconnect this and plug in the stock charger and see if it'll begin to take a charge that way. We'll let that run for about three to five minutes, then we'll put everything back together and see if it can't just get a charge. 
configured normally. Okay, looks like it's running, so we'll keep that going for about three minutes, maybe five, and put the battery back together. I let it run for about five minutes, and now when I push this button on the top here to check the charge, it does indicate that there is a charge in there. So fingers crossed everything worked. Let's take you in a little bit closer. Okay, so now let's carefully disconnect everything. So I'm disconnecting the charge port and disconnecting our butt connector if I can. Now let's unscrew our jumper wire from the negative. Pull off our jumper wire. I guess I'll hang on to this. Heavens forbid I ever need it again. But now we have a disconnected negative wire that we need to reconnect. So we'll take this connector here with the solder in the middle of it, and that's what's going to reestablish our connection. And I did forget to mention you'll want a heat gun as well. All right, got that heat shrink on there. So I wanna reconnect this, but I do actually wanna add just some more heat shrink on there, just to have it as close to what it was as before. But first, before we do that, let's just make sure that everything charges. Okay, so reconnecting the charger here. And let's see if it goes. Okay. Charging with the BMS reattached. Let's get some heat shrink back on here. Almost looks factory. Well, now that everything seems like it should be working as it should, let's throw in this gasket and put it all back together. So I have the battery all put back together. I made sure that these seams are all nice and tight. The screws are tight as well. And also it still lights up when I go to check the power. So we should be good to go. If you have a dead Talaria battery, all hope isn't lost. You can get it revived. But as I keep mentioning, this can be dangerous. So I did this for educational purposes and to see if I could do it myself. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and hit that like button and comment down below. What are your tips for battery hygiene so this doesn't happen to other viewers of this channel? And of course, while you're down there, hit that subscribe button. Have a great rest of your day.